Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Manager 2017 and a brand new experiment that we're going to be trying today. Um, last experiment we took the perfect regen, we just picked a youth product from Newcastle United and we gave him all of the best stats possible. We then follow him, followed him through six parts where he became the best player in the world, won the Champions League and Premier League plenty of times, all with Tottenham Hotspur. Then he retired, became a manager, we let him carry on as the perfect manager, giving him again the best possible management stats. He pushed on, he managed Bayern Munich, PSG, back at Tottenham Hotspur, winning the Champions League with each of those clubs along the way. It was quite a story, so if you haven't watched that series, go and check that out um, either before or at the end of this part. Um, but this is along a similar vein, so what we've done is we've actually made um, the team of perfect regions and we've done it with Cambridge United um, just because they happen to be in League 2 um, and I spent some time in Cambridge uh, recently so I thought why not go for there. What I've done is pick 11 players playing a flat 4-4-2 um, and made them the best possible players. So in goal um, it was Will Norris and we took him and made him 20 on absolutely everything. Now he is an existing player. What I've done is set his age back to 15 which makes it look a bit weird in the career stats because he's already been going. Um, but I'm sure we'll survive through that. There's plenty of other players too. I think Leon Lege is another one. Um, he's got the perfect stats. I've also frozen their attributes, so hopefully they will all remain at 20 as well. Um, they've also had their hidden attributes put up to 20, except for things like dirtiness and uh, controversy. So everything else should be perfect with all of these players. So there's 11 players that I've done this with, going right the way up to two strikers. And I think just about all of these players are English, uh, which means that they're all going to have a chance at um, playing for England hopefully. Now the main worry I have with this series is that as they're a League 2 team and these players are very young, they could be signed by Premier League teams um, and I've not yet decided how I'm going to deal with that. I think what I'll do is up until Cambridge reach the Premier League, I'll keep an eye on the transfer windows and bring back any players that are sold just so that they can develop here and then from the Premier League onwards when they get into the Premier League I might just let the game run and do what it wants to do um, but let me know what you think about whether I should keep bringing the players back or just see if Cambridge can hang on to them when they actually reach the Premier League. Um, I'm not at the moment planning to manage this team myself which is would be one way at stopping players leaving the club but that's because I want the club to actually progress and bring in new players and grow as a team. I don't want them to just be reliant on these 11 players um, alone but I'll go forward I'll see how it all works out and I'll check in with you um, at the end of our first season well here we are at the end of our first season with Cambridge United and the perfect team of players and there's already something jumping out at me um, and that's that Gus Hiddink is now the manager now that is partly my fault the current manager is doing perfectly fine but I got a little bit frustrated at players being yanked out of the club all the time. So I put myself as manager for a couple of games um, and then decided to just let the game do what it was. Instead, I have been bringing players back. So if we have a look at the transfer, win, uh, transfer history first and foremost, you'll see that a lot of these world-class uh, perfect players were going for 1.3, 1.8, even £875,000 to Premier League clubs, which I just thought was outrageously unfair. So I brought them all back as soon as they went. Um, so they're all still in the club at the moment. There's no trouble with that. But let's have a look at their schedule. And as you can see, it makes some pretty nice readings. They start off getting a perfect pre-season, kick off in League 2 with a good win, get past Nottingham Forest in the EFL Cup first round, Wolves in the second round. They get a perfect start in the Checker Trade Paint Trophy as well. Uh, continuing a perfect, perfect run, beating Stoke, Premier League Stoke 4-1 at home in the EFL Cup third round, um, beating QPR at home 3-1 in the fourth round, and then beating Telford 6-0 in the FA Cup first round. They carried on perfectly in the league, and then beat Liverpool 3-1 in the EFL Cup quarter final. That's not bad at all, um, especially at home against them. Then they took on Bristol and Chesterfield getting some more victories in the Checker Trade Trophy. Uh, still a perfect record in the league. Then beating Wolves in the FA Cup third round. They actually had West Brom in the EFL Cup semi-final, winning the first leg 2-0, um, carrying on perfectly through all these games. And then beating West Brom 3-2 away from home. That's the closest they've come to not winning a game, I think. Um, and then they carried on going past Brighton in the FA Cup fourth round. Still a perfect run. Um, through to the Trekker Trade 
Paint Trophy quarter final, uh, beating Stoke again in the FA Cup fifth round, and then beating Manchester United 4 0 in the EFL Cup final. That is absolutely incredible. Uh, Connor Newton getting a 10 out of 10 with two goals in that game. Um, they carry on perfectly in the league. Just so you know, that also means that they will be in Europe next season. This League One team, as they will be then, will be in the Europa League next season. Um, they also beat Liverpool 6-1 at Anfield in the FA Cup quarter-final. 3-0 at home against Stoke in the Ch uh, Czech trade semi-finals, continuing a perfect run in the league, beating Gillingham to win the Checker Trade Paint Trophy final, um, still perfect in the league, beating West Brom 2-1 in the FA Cup semi-final after doing it in the EFL Cup semi-final, beating every team in the league. It's a perfect run throughout an entire season for this perfect team, just finishing with a 3-0 win in the FA Cup final against Manchester United. They won every game they were in that season, every single game in every single tournament, including the FA Cup final at Wembley, which means they're going into the Europa League next season, which means they could win the Europa League next season and get into the Champions League while they're still in the Championship, which is just phenomenal. Um, but that is quite a little run. We'll just take an overview of their competitions um, and you'll see that they were top 46 games played, 46 wins, 154 goals and 138 points, maximum points in Sky Bet League 2, winning the FA Cup, winning the EFL Cup and winning the Checker Trade Trophy. That is absolutely phenomenal. If we have a look at their players and maybe sort them by average rating would be the best way to do it. Um, you've got these players at the top here getting Joe Piggott's not been playing that much. I'm not sure what that's about. I don't know if it's because he left. Um, no, he's just not been playing, despite being pretty much perfect, I think. He has barely been in the team, probably because of their formation, which is just crazy to think about. Uh, Bradley Halliday only getting 27 games as well. 70 games, though, for Medi Alito, who got 50 goals and 37 assists in those games as a left winger, which is phenomenal. Um, then you've got this guy, Ikpaz... Ikpeazu, I assume. He only played 18 games as well. So some of their best players didn't actually play that much. Uh, Mark Roberts, the centre-back, he was perfect as well. Uh, Blair Adams had a perfect run. Added Adam McGurk. He got 52 goals. So he was the club top scorer. Um, the likes of Connor Newton, Leon Ledge, David Dunn. David Gregory, not a perfect player. I think all of these players are, though. Um, so that's not a big surprise. Ben Williamson, also another one that wasn't up there. Um, it looks like people like Mingola did get quite a few games, though, which is a little bit surprising because he's played more games than the, one of the perfect players, which is, it, there must have been something else going on during that time. Um, but still absolutely incredible. The Medialito stats of 50 goals, 37 assists. That's He he took part in 87 goals in 70 games. That's better than Lionel Messi at his peak. Um and that came from the left side of midfield as well at 16 years old. So there's surely a lot more to come from him. Um, but overall, look at this trophy cabinet they've picked up in their first season, winning the FA Cup, the EFL Cup, the Skybet League 2 and the Checker Trade Trophy. It's a quadruple in their first season. So let's skip forward another season. We'll take another look at where they are and then we will go from there. Well, here we are back one year later, Gus Hiddink is still the manager of the club. It looks like they've switched their captains around, but that's because a lot of players were sold. If we have a look at the transfer history, you'll see there are a lot more transfers this time around. Going for quite a bit more money as well. Nobody breaking 20 million yet, but still Arsenal are raiding this team for their best players, which is not entirely surprising. But it means they brought in £94 million without actually signing anybody um, for any fee. All of these players were actually just being pulled back to the club after they went out, um, other than the chat from AS Monaco, Medialito. Um, although actually, no, he was another player who was pulled out of the club. So they've not actually brought anybody in. They're still relying on the 11 players that we gave them at the start of this series. Um, so that's a little bit surprising that given they've had £94 million pumped into the club, they've actually not spent any money. Um, now, if we have a look at their schedule and do what we did last time, you can see there's actually a little bit more bitty this time. Now, I think the start is because some players were ripped out and they struggled a bit in their friendlies. They were clearly trying to bring cash in looking at these home matches. Um, and then they won the Community Shield against Manchester United in their first game. And then continued their perfect run of form up until taking on Southampton in the EFL Cup second round, where they were actually knocked out in extra time by Southampton. 
Uh, Bufal getting the goal in the 106th minute to knock Cambridge out. Their first ever defeat with these perfect players. And then they carried on going, kicking off in the in Europe against Dnipro, which they won 5-0. And then beating Luda Garretz, 3-0 as well. Threw in the Checker Trade paint trophy again, which they're looking to retain. They drew with Roma. That's only the second game they failed to win. Uh, and it required an 86-minute equaliser for Mohamed Salah. Um, but they carried on winning in the league, beat Barrow in the first round of the FA Cup, beat Roma away 2-0 in the Europa League, uh, through the Checker Trade Trophy, continuing their run in the group stage, which I assume they got through. But then they were held at home by Wickham in League One. Now, that is the most surprising result we've seen. It looks like their perfect form might not continue to be perfect forever. Um, but then they carry on their excellent winning run, beating Stevenage in the FA Cup third round, continuing in the Checker Trade Trophy, beating West Ham at home in the fourth round of the FA Cup as they look to retain that competition. And then they beat Manchester United 3-2 in the FA Cup fifth round. Joe Piggott getting a 58th minute winner. Um, beat Bordeaux in the Europa League knockout stages, just about scraping through with a, a wave lead and then managing to go through. Um, despite having Granite Xhaka sent off. What is that about? They must have signed Granite Xhaka this season. I don't remember seeing that. Did They They did sign Granite Xhaka. They got him in on loan. They also got Eric Bailly in on loan. So they're, because of they won the FA Cup and um, the uh, EFL Cup last season, they must have a much higher reputation, which is allowing them to bring these kind of players in which is just phenomenal for a League One team. Uh, but they got through that round, and then they were hammered 3-0 away from home by Wolfsburg, a real harsh lesson in European football for them. It, they were just unable to hold on to it. Mario Gomez getting the goal that put Wolfsburg through. They would have needed another two to actually go through on the night. Um, so it was just a bit too much after it went to 1-1. That was probably all over for them. But they carried on in the Checker Trade Trophy, carried on in the league, managed to win the Checker Trade Trophy for the second year in a row, beating Liverpool under 23s 3-1. They managed to beat Leicester in the FA Cup semi-final too, a 3-1 win there for them, um, before carrying on even further, to the FA Cup final, which they beat Hull in 3-2. It took, well, they were 3-1 up after 34 minutes. Abel Hernandez tried to pull Hull back into it, but it wasn't enough, which meant that Cambridge retains the FA Cup for a second year in a row. It meant they almost had a perfect league run. If you just have a look at their, their record, 45 wins, one draw. It meant they over nearly... 100 games of league football they've only drawn once and never been beaten that's not a bad run at all but getting knocked out of the Europa League which was won by Atletico Madrid um, and also getting knocked out of the EFL Cup by Southampton in the second round was very disappointing it means they win less competitions this year than they did last year they actually almost had a worse season this year than last year uh, a quick look at their players and you'll see by average rating it's the same players popping up again uh, because there's only 11 of them um, but if we look for their top goal scorer you'll see it was Medi Alito again I think from that left flank getting all of the goals 47 goals 17 assists just a little bit outshone by Adam McGurk who I think's a right winger so the guy on the right wing did better than Medi Alito this season um but 40 assists for the right back is not bad going as well uh, either. You can see where their threat came from because that's 65 assists from the right flank this season. Um, but a very good run of games and Joe Piggott getting the goals from up front as well. Um, now worth noting that it looks like their stats have dropped down, which given they've got frozen attributes, I don't really understand. It might just be that I can't see them, but if I think I go to start editing, they have lost their stats, um, and I don't know why that's happened, because it didn't happen in our Perfect Region series, so I'm not sure why it's happening now. If anybody knows why that's happening, do let me know. I'm not going to go through and put everything back up to 20, as long as it doesn't drop below 17, I don't really care. They're still going to be pretty much perfect players, and it's going to be hard for anybody to stop them. Um, but we are going to skip forward one more season, go through their championships season and see how they get on well here we are then another year in and it looks like they have won the championship which means they'll be in the premier league next season Gus Hiddink is still in charge if we have a look at their transfers you will see that the players are going for a lot more money now they've brought in 180 million pounds um, 20 million going out for Joe Piggott, 22 and a half for James Dunn, but then 34 million pounds for Leon Legger is by far the standout transfer. In terms of players coming in, though, they have actually spent some money. They brought in Adam Unas from 
Bordeaux. He's a right winger. Um, I'm not sure how much game time these players are actually going to get. Um, who else did they bring in? £26 million on Reese Oxford. That's not bad. And then up to £20 million on Vieira from Burnley. £10 million on Daniel Bentley as well. Quite a few uh, free players coming in, but they also brought uh, Xhaka back on loan, Danny Welbeck in on loan, Morgan Schneiderlin in on loan, um, which is just crazy that they're able to bring these players in in the championship. Um, if we have a look at their schedule, though, and run through, they actually lost their first game at home um, in pre-season and then carried on winning the Community Shield for the second year in a row. They managed to progress through the EFL Cup this time, held to a draw by Milton Keynes Dons, the franchise club, um, but then carried on. They had a perfect record after this, going through against Chesterfield in the EFL Cup, winning all of their Europa League matches, including Ajax 3-0, 7-0 against Legia Warsaw, a particular highlight, then winning again against Ajax 5-1, through in the EFL Cup quarter final against Newcastle 3-0. Winning again in the Europa League, perfect record, carrying on. Then being held to a draw away at Brentford. So it looks like they're picking up a few more draws these days. But they did get through in the FA Cup. They had Spurs away 3-1 in the FL Cup semi-final leg. And then won 4-1 in the home leg, just to go an extra level. Um, through against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Held by Fulham in the Championship. Still not beaten in the league, I don't think. Uh, through against FC Copenhagen, 6-0 on aggregate. And beating United in the EFL Cup to win that trophy for a second time. Um, and then losing to Lyon in the Europa League. So they still haven't won the Europa League. Losing the first leg, but drawing in the second. It wasn't enough to go through. Uh, and Lyon made the quarterfinals in their place. But they did keep winning in the championship. Um, kept on going. And then beat Leicester 2 0 in the FA Cup semi final. I think you can see where that one's going. Oh, they actually lost in the FA Cup final on penalties to Liverpool. It would have been the third time in a row they'd win the FA Cup. And instead, they've been beaten on penalties. That must be heartbreaking. If we just have a look, quick look at the overall competition screen, if I can manage to get onto it. Um, they did win the league. Dropped four games this season, but still unbeaten in the league over three years, which is absolutely crazy. 130 points, well clear of Hull. Um, Runner-up in the FA Cup, though, but won at the EFL Cup, so they will still be in the Europa League next season as a result of that. They've got the Community Shield as well, so their first season in the Premier League will continue with European football. I imagine they'll finish in the top four and probably win the Premier League as well, uh, which will be quite interesting. But from this point on, to make it interesting, I am not going to bring any more players back to the club. They're in the Premier League and it's on their own. So you could see that all of their players are leaving. If we do do that, I might bring them back. But for now, I'm just going to let it go. And I think what we'll do is progress four years ahead. Um, but that will be in the next episode. I'm not going to do that in this episode. This one's already run a little bit long. But let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this experiment. Drop a like on the video too if you want me to do another episode. Um, I'll try and get it up in the next few days if you guys are interested. But until next time, see ya.